Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I thought I would start off with uh, kind of like a tour of the parlor. Uh, they didn't start milking yet, but once they start milking, I'll come back into the parlor and just show you the process. Um, so let's get started here, shall we? So to start off here, we have the cow barn, obviously, and this is where they would enter the parlor and leave the parlor. Um, on the exit of that, on the other side of that barn there, we have a cow lane that goes down to our second cow barn to also bring out cows to this parlor. So, as you come in the parlor here, we have the holding area. And this gate will swing down behind the cows to keep the cows in the holding area. As the cows uh, walk up to the parlor here. So, there's two entrances, one here and one over there. Uh, this swing gate right here will close when well we we have to close it manually well there's a button but this gate will close cutting off the entrance to this to the I don't know what you would call it the walkway here but each one of these sides would hold 20 cows and when we start off we'll bring cows in on both sides but then we'll start uh, putting iodine and then we'll strip the, each teeth, clean it, and then put the milkers on. And then we'll start on the other side. And while these are milking, we'll be putting milkers on this side. And by the time we're done over here, these cows will be done. And then this will rotate and the cows can exit, which I'll show you that process later. So let's get to work a while. One important thing I forgot about when, from the cows, when they get milk, they'll come through here and then these gets cooled. And then we have two 8,000 gallon milk tanks here. Uh, and then the milk truck parks right out there. We pump, pump into the milk truck and load it up and we'll send it off. The reason I came down here was yesterday we had a cow give birth to triplets and they're all alive, which is cool. Usually when you have that many calves, it's risky. I mean, it's like any other pregnancy. I mean, you have the risk of a the child dying. But coincidentally, they're starting to bring up cows right about now. Uh, they'll travel up this cow lane and go into the parlor. Um, as they're pushing the cows out, they'll clean off each of their free stalls, which you saw in a previous video what they look like. Cow free stalls are a little larger because obviously a cow is larger and needs more space to lay down. So as you can tell, there is not a shortage of calves right now. That's a bull, heifer. I want to. I would like to say the triplets are in one of these pens. Like that'd be cool if that was them. I think that would be them because they are smaller in size here. The one's larger, so I'm not sure. That's definitely one of the triplets, possibly that one. And then I wanna say this one right here, because these are all small, she's larger, so. But yeah, so I'm guessing one, two, three. But they were all together, if not her, but she's larger, so I doubt it was her. And I'll put some pictures on the screen here, right about now. Just, just so you guys can see what what they look like and enjoy that moment. Some of you might be wondering, are we going to keep those calves? Well, one of them's a bull, so no. The reason we're not going to keep the heifers since one's a bull is because if we send that bull off and they use that bull for a... Uh, artificial insemination like they collect the semen if there's a chance that we would use that stuff and we would have a heifer like a sibling to that bull that's asking for some funky stuff so you, I don't have to go any further you guys probably get the picture but they're also smaller so So I think to start off here, I'm gonna clean water bowls back in the transition barn. Um, then after that, probably vaccinate. And I'll find other stuff to do, guarantee it. So the reason we clean water bowls is, is obviously so they can have clean uh, drinking water. But another reason would be to uh, prevent 
disease, sickness is. Um, the reason their drinking water gets kind of gross sometimes is because cows, or I should say heifers right now, but just cattle in general, their nose, I mean, all it takes is it to be wet, and as they're eating their TMR, total mixed ration, if they have some silage or anything, and they go in to get a drink, that gets in the water, and that stays in the water, and if they have some snot too, that goes in the water. Blow a couple snot rockets into their water bowl. It's good stuff. That's why I have the gloves on. Just because you have a nice odor on your hands then after uh, cleaning water bowls if you don't. So let's get this party started. And then, oh yeah, another thing, I'll scrape out this alleyway here. I'm not going to scrape it out first because, well, I have to drain out the water bowls. So if I put fresh uh, shavings down, then I'm already ruining their... Uh, nice dry shaving so I'll let them ruin it not me so it looks a lot worse on camera I'm just looking at the screen right now you do have a little bit of algae here on the sides once you try to scrub off as that the best you can but this part like this is pretty clean like this is not dirty but you can see at the bottom there's like a mix of snot and silage or TMR it's lovely stuff so first I'm gonna drain I'll kind of scrub the sides and stuff let it drain out and then let it fill up kind of again and then scrub that off that as much of that green algae i don't know if you call it stain as much as i can but obviously nothing's perfect but i'll try here they also get dirty quickly i was just doing this like a couple weeks ago didn't put i didn't make a video out of it because i'm trying to save content for you guys so So as you can tell, the, wa the water is a lot cleaner. I mean, there's still dirt, but that's just what the case is here. It's, um, I scrub this as much as possible, but yep, this it looks a lot cleaner. You don't see all the gunk at the bottom and hope you girls are happy. And this is what I mean, it left kind of like a watery mess, which I'll be able to clean up when I scrape this uh, alleyway here. Okay, so. Only seven more to do. Let's go. So I, I'm like cleaning water bowls out, and I'm like, man, I'm getting hot and sweaty. And then it's like it's only I don't even know if it's 80 degrees out. Maybe it is, but the humidity is nasty. But I'm looking off into the distance. I'm seeing darkness. Are we gonna get another shot of rain? I'm also at the halfway point, so I have four more water bowls to do. And I get done with these, girls. And none of them even thanked me. They're just hogging up all the water. How rude. I clean their their dishes because it's a bowl. Haha. -ha. And none of y'all thanked me. I don't really appreciate this. Y'all looking at me like I'm foreign. You see me every day. Whatever. T women, I tell you. All right, now that I'm done with the water bowls, I'm gonna come back here and scrape out their alleyway. 
Maybe they'll thank me after that, but I doubt it. If you're wondering when we're gonna resume finishing our freestyle work down in our heifer barn, that's when we get the bolts. So that's uh, holding us up. Uh, it's kind of nice because it spaces out the work, but at the same time, I kind of wish we could do it all at once so I could just get it out of the way. So it's a bittersweet. Kind of more bitter anything, and then more than anything, yeah, tongue tied. For those that are new to the channel, and I guess that for those that have been watching my channel for the last couple of months, but anyway, uh, this area is where we keep the ingredients to our cow and heifer chow, TMR, total mix ration. So, uh, sawdust that's not part of their ration, that's for bedding up. We got straw. And I'm not sure what that is, but I know we have, I think, beet or citrus pulp in one of these there. And I'm not sure. That's, yeah, the mineral. I don't know everything. If I did, I don't know. I don't know what I would do if I did. But anyway, so this big bunk here was corn silage. We're getting down to the end. I don't know if you can tell at the very back of the bunk, you see a little silage sticking up. But we're almost there. Then we'll start over here at this bunk. Two bunks over there. Previous videos when we were chopping rye and triticale, one bunk is most one bunk is mostly rye. It has some triticale in, and then this second bunk here has triticale. Um, you might be wondering what is all this juice? Well, that's bunker juice. When this is fermenting, and when we do chop. And put this into a pile there's still moisture so that moisture is getting compressed and pushed out and you get this lovely juice um this is another reason people that do have silos and put silage in a silo they want the uh, silage to be more dry uh the juices can actually corrode away at the concrete and that's no bueno you don't want that but uh yes cow chow pepper chow area we keep our shell corn up in those four out of the five silos. The uh, one that you can see, the largest one, we don't have any shelled corn in because we have to convert the unloader to for shelled corn, which costs money. So, and we don't even need to use it. So maybe that's something down the road. If we get more ground and we have more cows that we need to feed, then we'll, we would uh, convert that silo over. Um, there's also some minerals up there. I'm not sure they're in two little bins in between in the silos uh if you have any other questions leave them down in the comments um i had two other questions asking about those silos so i thought i would come down here and talk about this for a little bit so if you have any questions i hope this kind of answered some and all right enough of yapping let's go and clean up the alleyway None of these ladies are even saying thank you yet. They're all just quiet, watching me do my work. I see how it is. It's one of those days. Oh well, maybe they'll be happier tomorrow. Before I vaccinate here, I thought I would show you guys the process of milking here. I'll just set the camera down here and you guys can watch. First, we'll put uh, foam iodine on each of the teeth. We'll strip the teeth, which you'll see what that is. And then I'll clean off the teeth and put the milkers on. And then over here, you can see these cows are getting milked. So then we'll put uh, iodine on to each of the teeth. That just helps uh, keep the teeth clean and prevent infection. So, all right, there we go.
here's the liquid iodine put on each teeth. It's kind of difficult to do this when you're multitasking, but you guys get the point. And then when these are done here, go exit this reel. Yep. Ladies happy? Of course you are. Now they get to go back to their barn. They can lay down, relax, eat. So this in the parlor they probably spend about maybe 20 minutes, give or take, maybe 30 minutes. Not long at all. The rest of their day, uh well they get milked three times a day. It's maybe over an hour in the parlor every day. That's getting milked three times. So but the rest of the day they're chilling. These girls are following me. Here's the gate. And then the cows are waiting in here. There's a sprinkler up there keeping them cool. There's fans. They've got a relaxing life. She's chewing her cud. And if you don't know what uh, chewing cud means, uh, it's when the uh, cow regurgitates its food and then chews it again. Uh, they have like, I don't want to say four stem stomachs. They have, it's one stomach, but they have four different sections in that stomach. All right, now I'm going to get ready to vaccinate some calves. I'm just going to do 12 and we'll see what time it is after that. Might go home and eat. I know the grass needs mowed around where, we, where I live, so probably should do that. So we finished the front barn, now I'm in the back barn and we're starting here with cashier number please, 2427 and work from here on up. Um, after I finish, uh, how many calves would this be? Looks like two or three, I'm trying to forget how many I did up there. That means I have bad memory. Okay, well, so I think after this I'm going to go home, eat mow grass around the house and then come back and my dad should be back he went on a trip to go pick up my sister so he should be back soon we'll see if he does if he if he's doing anything interesting maybe i'll have to give him the camera we'll see so i'm here with my dad he's vaccinating these uh heifers that are in this uh, transition barn here um what are, what are, what are we vaccinating for Vaccinating for bovine, some word I can't pronounce, diarrhea, higher influenza, respiratory, another word I don't really know how to say. Um, yes, uh, I thought the coronavirus was in here, but maybe that was another brand. But yeah, it's to help help with respiratory and uh, other diarrhea stuff. That's the best way I can explain it. I'm not a vet. I just know we're supposed to do it. So, you know, it definitely helps. So pretty much we just do what the vet tells us to do. I'm also looking for extra spigots, extra teats. If I have any extra teats, I do away with them. I get them all. The reason, well these are called headlocks because obviously you can lock them if you need to. The reason we would lock them is so they just don't go out of, they don't get out of control. This is an easier way to keep the animals still. They can still kick, which is you have to watch out for. But when you have an animal this large, it's kind of hard to keep, keep them under control. And then when you're done, you can release them. So from previous videos, uh, you saw how we put new cab suspension on this tractor. We widened the duals, but then my dad also increased the stance of the front tires. The problem is when you turn sharp enough, this side of the tire rubs against this loader frame and that's no good. So what we need to do is pull the wheels. I'm inwards. flipping the wheel and mounting it at a different spot on the dish of the rim. So it's in further, basically putting it back to where it was which is unfortunate because I don't like doing things twice. 
but it happens. Me and my cousin Mitch are going to feed, and my dad's finishing up on the bolts. He's tightening them, tightening the bolts for the front track, or the front axle there on the tractor. And yeah, like I said, me and Mitch are gonna get to feeding. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.